Ben. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoe filling in for Tom O'Brien. This is the Tom O'Brien Show. We are back into operational, more or less. We'll discuss a little bit of what happened last week. And uh, first, let's go through everything. We're making all time highs. This market is inordinately, uh, it's just, it's, it's strong. It's super strong. Composite up about 0.95%. The Dow Jones Industrial up about 0.52%. That dollar, even again, you're having this kind of divergence a little bit, right? Where the dollar's going higher, usually you're gonna see the indices pump a little bit lower. Uh, not the, the case in any capacity. Um, certainly, I would say that this is probably coming from some uh, faltering in the Eurozone. There's some potential for Germany to go into a recession. Uh, they're essentially the most dominant um, economy uh, in the Eurozone. Obviously, China's having some woes. We'll talk a little bit about what they're trying to do uh, to help that. Uh, but the dollar, I mean, this is a massive counter trend bounce off the 100 level. Up, uh, trading at 103.25, about 0.33% right now. Uh, crude oil coming down quite a bit, again, on some fears of uh, Chinese deflation continuing. And then, uh, I mean, of course, the tensions in the Middle East are still uh, impacting uh, the kind of price, but you're seeing some movement down. We're not as low as we were on that 65.27, kind of hovering in that mid, uh, you know, between 70 to 75. Again, you're getting some depression on it. Uh, because of fears uh, from China. You have the E-mini up about 0.84%. You get 5,909. Uh, I believe the SPY, if I can get to it, it's about 584 currently, which is pretty insane to see. And uh, I mean, it's being driven by tech in a major way, right? And we can discuss that a little bit further. Uh, Russell Futures up about 0.64%. Uh, gold, you know, the metals off pretty heavily today. You have gold contract off about 0.36%. Copper trading down 2.03%. And then you have silver off about 1.15% as well. Uh, let's see what else we have going on here. Apple up about 1.7. What is Tesla doing today? That, okay, up about 0.53, but it lost quite a bit. Let's take a look at that real quick because they had their RoboTaxi unveiling. They had uh, Optimus. Yeah, I mean, look at this. This is a big sell off too. Nice gap down to that 220 on some pretty significant volume as well. Getting some buying today, but that's probably just because people want to get in Tesla and they, they see this as a reason. I think I watched a lot of that, you know, the, the clips from the RoboTaxi event and, and showcasing Optimus and all of this. I think it was not good, to, to be honest. I think, one, a lot of people are very hyped with AI, okay? And they're kind of explaining they can use the AI with the Optimus. The Optimus is a whole new deal they're going to have to kind of hype people on. Uh, I think they're saying something around $30,000 for one of these units when they get it at scale. Uh, still pretty prohibitive for a lot of people. Um, and it was supposed to, you know, showcase their engineering capabilities for humanoid-like robots and then uh, also AI interaction. But I think, and, and some analysts also saw this from, from large banks, but, you know, Optimus, that was not AI. I mean, those were no doubt people. I mean, you should listen to that. I think the I think it was a robot walking around, but the discussion and everything you're hearing, you know, response uh, was was totally people, which is a bizarre thing to do. I mean, why even show it, right? Because you run such a massive risk of people being like, "Hey, this this isn't what you're saying it is." And then of course, the you know the cyber cab, um, it, it didn't really demonstrate anything in a major way, especially when you're in a realm with Waymo, which is already operating on the streets. Okay. Um, you had Uber and Lyft blow up after that. Uh, this was, a, in my opinion, a pretty big fail uh, from Tesla. And I don't know how you come back from it in a major way. They are going to come back from it, obviously, because they just they produce so much. They have all these kind of deals um, with, with the charging. Of course, their data is massive. But it seems like they're getting out-competed with Waymo right now in this realm, which is kind of what people were banking on. I mean, if Waymo is successful, you see in China... You know, they, they use these autonomous taxis, at least for, you know, food delivery and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, but this is a huge stumbling block for Tesla. Uh, I think it was a major failure. So we'll see what happens. The market responded uh, similarly, uh, you know, with, within that kind of sentiment as well. Trying to get 218.88. And so we'll see what they do um, in order to kind of bounce back from that. Uh, let's take a look. First, I want to, you know, talk a little bit. Of, of course, you know, we got hit by a hurricane a little bit south of us. Uh, it was... At a cat five for quite a while, it came down to a cat four and it hit us um, at a cat three. 
I lived downtown and the, the destruction was immense. I mean, this is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you some pictures from it. This is Tropicana Field, uh, totally destroyed. We just got power back at the office sometime, you know, between 9 p.m. last night and earlier this morning. Uh, we had something roughly like 70% of the county uh, was without power for a few days. Um, you had it in Lee County, where it was, oh, you know, kind of north of 90%, which was insane. Uh, this is the damage here. Obviously, a lot of trees coming down. Let's see if I can find this one. This is pretty nuts video here. So I live, uh, it's not pulling up. Oh, I see. So I live right by this building here. And I was out there with some people who live in my building and this massive explode, you know, we heard this massive crash and they're like, was that a transformer? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm pretty certain that was a crane. And sure enough, it, it was a crane. They didn't have enough time, I suppose, to get this crane down. I think it's a you know, big issue. It wasn't, you know, bound to the building in any capacity. Um, luckily, this wasn't residential. This was um, office space. Uh, but I mean, just look at that damage. I mean, it's pretty crazy. Trees down everywhere, live wires down everywhere. You had people further exacerbating the situation uh, by cutting fiber optic cables that, that were um, operational. Uh, so yeah, quite, quite the significant storm. And it makes you kind of think, you know, if we did get hit by a Cat 5, you know, how badly that would be. So thanks for your, your patience last week. I know we weren't really on doing anything and some of the newsletters weren't getting out in some major ways. So we, we appreciate that. Um, they were saying, this is from Bloomberg. They're saying from both Helene and Milton, you know, we got a major storm surge from Helene uh, that destroyed uh, our entire coastline. Um, so, you know, if you're thinking of visiting Florida for the beaches, I would, I would wait some time for that. Um, but they were saying it's expected to cost insurers 35 to 55 billion. That's according to Moody's RMS Risk Modeling Unit. This lines up with some basically contributors to Bloomberg. They said the two storms will likely affect insurers' earnings without having a significant impact on the balance sheets of reinsurance firms. This is going to shield consumers from further large rate increases, which I think you know, remains to be seen. Um, yeah. We'll discuss some more when we get back. We're back.